Hi guys and welcome back to Keep Smiling Adventures and today I thought we would do something a little bit different because the year is nearly, well it's nearly ended, it's nearly 2022 so I thought we would go back and take a look back at some of my best moments, some moments, moments that I just feel were just such good moments in 2021, my best bike packing memories and the best bits from the adventures this year. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look back at some of my best moments in 2021. Let's get into it. So the first memory I want to share with you is from the Black Mountain Crossing. Now this was one of the earlier bikepacking videos and something I always really wanted to do and I really want to do it on this trip was to get a really great camp spot. Basically the whole goal for this trip was to spend one night on top of a mountain and in this trip I thought it would be perfect to do it. It wasn't a too long trip and I just really wanted to spend a night on top of a mountain and I got to do that. And when I set up my camp that night, it was beautiful, it was clear, you, there was barely a breeze, you could see for miles and it was absolutely beautiful. So I managed to achieve that and I got to sleep on top of a mountain. And what made this even more memorable was waking up, opening my tent and just being in a cloud. It was just like, oh, there was a good view here last night, but now I'm in a cloud. It was such a fun um, night sleeping on top of a mountain. Mainly the reason I wanted to sleep up on top of this mountain was because then the first thing you get to do in the morning, really early, 5 a.m., you get to descend. That is the best way to start a day by descending. Now this was made even better because I went from being in a cloud to just down the bottom of the mountain. I got to descend from the clouds, through all the clouds, until the bottom where I could see everything. It was such a good night and a great way to start the morning. So the next memory I want to share with you guys is, well, if you watch these adventures of mine, you will know I am very much, very self-sufficient. I don't like to stop hotels or cafes and pubs and stuff I'm very much when I'm on these trips I stay outdoors as much as possible and this year although it wasn't the hottest year I've ever experienced we had a few days of nice hot weather on these bike packing trips and I made sure to make the most of them streams from just camping by them and being able to just chill and cool off in these streams for a couple of hours before you go to bed. And also just in the middle of the trip, just being able to just lay and just submerge yourself in this cold stream water is the nicest feeling you will ever feel. Being able to just have a bath in a stream with amazing views and just completely alone in the middle of nowhere is just the perfect way to spend a couple of hours on a bike packing adventure. Now it's obviously not something you get to do too often in the UK because it's normally a bit cold but when it is super hot it's definitely worth just spending a couple of hours here and there just stopping and just enjoying a nice wild bath. Now the next memory is from a very recent video, the Trans Cambrian Way. Now you will know if you watch this video, it didn't exactly go quite according to plan. I didn't exactly get to finish the whole trip because the weather was brutal. Now I have spent nights out camping in snow before, but I have never woken up on top of a mountain to be woken up essentially in a snowstorm and although the trip didn't go as like how I'd 
I would have liked it to. It was such an awesome experience to wake up from everything was green the night before, getting out my tent, coming out of this little wooded section and just seeing these snowy mountains, snow and being like, wow, this is beautiful. Although the ride was absolutely brutal and we ended up not finishing it, it was still such a fun memory to be able to say I woke up on top of a mountain in a snowstorm. Well, that's what it's all about and that is what I love. I love them extreme scenarios and it was absolutely brutal, but it was absolutely beautiful. Just being able to see all this beauty, but in a different perspective with snow, everything white, it was just awesome. Oh, this one was one to be remembered for sure. The Great North Trail, but not actually the whole trip. Just them first three days, they were absolutely brutal. It did not stop raining for them at first three days. And the bit that I remember the most was when waking up on around that third day, I woke up in basically a cloud. I barely slept, it had rained all night. But by the time I stepped foot out of my tent, it had to stop raining. A couple of hours went past that morning. It was still misty, it was still wet. But then the sun finally came out. Now, when you do these trips and you have to overcome all this weather, which is normally the biggest barrier in the UK, it's such a relief and such an amazing experience to be able to finally go oh, and relax because the sun is out. I was able to dry everything and it was just such a turning point in the Great North Trail trip for me that I just remember it just changed everything. My perspective of the trip changed everything that was, am I actually gonna make it? Is it going to actually just be like this the whole way? It just changed and it just went from being, this is a really hard trip to finally, this is now a fun trip. The rain finally stopped and that was just such a relief. And when I say the rain stopped, I mean it literally had not stopped for three days. Everything was wet, camping was miserable but then finally seeing that sun. And then by the end of that day, finally having the first day where it didn't rain and being able to sleep underneath the stars with my tent without the, even having the roof on, it was absolutely amazing. That moment will always stay with me. Okay, this one's a bit different because this one, I don't have any footage of this, but this was just such a weird and cool experience for me because I was coming back from um, bikepacking across Wales where I had to bail on the ride because my dynamo um, had stopped working and I was riding back and I was coming from Bristol to Bath and I was riding along and somebody shouted, that must be Keep Smiling Adventures. And for me, that was just such a weird um, experience to be like called from my YouTube name, not my real name, not like friends or something that know me, just a random person who watches this video. So shout out to you, Tim. It was lovely meeting you, meeting you that day, having a little ride with you. And guys, if you ever do spot the Keep Smiling Adventures in the wild, come and say hi. I will always love to have a chat with you. You make these videos worth doing. Yeah, that was such a cool little experience just here. Keeps my little adventures in the wild from somebody else. Now, after getting back from the Great North Trail, I really wanted to go and have a nice chilled out bike packing trip. Nothing too hard, nothing too strenuous. Take a couple days and just enjoy myself. No big miles and just generally just enjoy being outdoors in a stress-free environment. And luckily Cycling UK had come out with the West Kerno Way so it was the perfect opportunity to head down to Cornwall and spend about 
a hundred and so miles just chilling in the Cornish land. Now, the best memory on this trip was actually, I think it was the second night when I was set up my hammock, I could hear the waves from the sea not too far away, but that wasn't even the best thing. As I was laid there and the sun started setting, all I could hear was somebody in the field not too far away from where I was singing. And this person was actually pretty good at singing and it was just such a chill, weird kind of chill night. I was just hanging around in my hammock super relaxed, super warm, super cozy, enjoying the sound of the waves and just somebody casually singing in a field next to me. It was just super calming and just super relaxing. Just what I needed after um, quite a big trip on the Great North Trail. So that trip on the West Kono Way was actually my favorite moment, just chilling in my hammock, listening to somebody sing and listening to the waves crash. Now another memory from the Black Mountain crossing was when I got to cycle quite early in the morning up to this beautiful, beautiful lake. Now this was made even more beautiful this day because it was just so calm. The sound was there was no sound i can't even explain it because it was just there's just no sound and it was so peaceful looking at this lake just sat there just in silence with these beautiful views this massive lake the lake was so still not even a ripple on this lake the clouds were super low and it just looked and it was just so amazing it was just such a fun place to just be able to just take it all in, sit there for 10, 15, 20 minutes and just enjoy the view. Now, to make this even better, to get to this lake, it's quite a long climb. It's a nice climb, it's all nice and gravel, but it is quite a long, uh, steepish kind of climb. But that obviously means you get to descend. And after spending 20 minutes there, just chilling, enjoying the views, just absolute silence in that moment just pure bliss getting to absolutely descend down this descent away from this lake it was just absolutely amazing fun now if you know me personally you will know i come from a background of just really like riding my bike and riding it far and for long long periods of time. Now it's normally been on the road um, just to go and explore places. That's normally, that is pretty much how I started to love cycling and cycling and adventures was getting on my bike after work, spending the next few days when I wouldn't be working the next few days and just going wherever. And I would clock up 200 to 300 miles every day for a few days at a time. Now since this year has been a very off-road bike packing type adventures and after i had done the king alfred's way twice well one time i completed it one time i broke my bike i decided that i really wanted to try and complete the king alfred's way in one consecutive ride i knew it would be tough and i knew it would be hard 220 miles off road is a big ask but i was certain i could do it now the first attempt uh, we had a lot of issues with the um, tubeless tires me trying to set them up on a bit of a wing and it didn't quite go to plan but the second time we attempted this although a bit slower than i would have liked because of gps issues we managed to complete the King Alfred's Way in one go. I think the moving time was something like 21, 22 hours. And just knowing that I had done 220 miles off-road in one consecutive ride, I was super, super happy with it. Still to this day, that is the longest off-road ride I've done in one go. Hopefully we will beat that at some point in the future. So definitely subscribe if you would like to see me 
go on some mad off-road adventures trying to beat that record. Now I think this was actually my first bike packing video that I posted on this channel and that was bike packing the South Downs way. I think we took like a day and a half to do it, two days, something like that. And we spent a night under the stars. Now from what I remember from that trip, it was hilly, it was brutal and I did not have the correct gear in. There was lots of hiker bike. But after the first day, we decided to camp. I had this beautiful view, but it was a very cold night. Super clear, super beautiful, but obviously super cold. But waking up in the morning, I had to climb this ridiculously steep, steep climb. And when I got to the top, I just remember just turning around and just being like, wow. It was just absolutely beautiful. It was so, so clear. I could see for miles, the sun was rising, the orange sky. It was just absolutely amazing to just be there at that exact time. Nobody was around. There was no noises apart from just birds and just generally just nature. No cars, I couldn't hear a thing apart from nature. And just looking back, from all the climbs and the hills that I'd been over that you can see on the South Downs Way was absolutely amazing. It was the most perfect morning, even though that ride is an absolute brutal one, just being able to look back every now and again and just go, wow, how beautiful. Wherever you look when you're on the South Downs, the views are amazing. Now, this one was a super fun one because I was bikepacking across Wales. Now, this was a route that I had created coming from uh, Abergavenny, I think, across all the way to the northwest of Scotland. Then I was going to come back. This was also the trip that the dynamo broke. And on the first day, pretty much we got to the first climb, we managed to get up this mountain and it was insanely, insanely windy. Now, it was just a lot of fun being up on this mountain in this crazy wind. I could barely ride, it was pushing my bike all over the place, but being able to basically do that thing when you lean into the wind and it just, you know, holds you up, it was just super fun. Just one of them things that you just always remember how funny it was just to be up in this mountain on your own, nobody else, just playing around like a kid. It was great fun. This one was one that I had been sitting on for a while, this idea of creating my own bike packing route for you guys to hopefully go out and enjoy some bike packing adventures, putting my own take on it, not completely away from everything, but a bit of everything, a bit of everything that I enjoy from a bike packing adventure. And I had been sitting on this idea from like 200 subscribers, but I wanted to grow the channel a bit so more people would actually see that video. So as the channel got a bit better and it grew a bit more I finally got out and created my own bike packing route the 370 miles of smiles so I definitely want to see you guys go out and hit that bike packing route tag me on Instagram at cute smiling adventures if you are on there and yeah I just look forward to actually seeing some people take on that bike packing route and let me know what you think if there's anything you want to change on it, let me know because we can definitely do that. But yeah, it was such a fun trip for me, just getting to do my own thing, my own route, and 370 miles of smiles was born. This memory was of course going to be in this video, and that was completing the Great North Trail. Now I discovered the Great North Trail route quite a while back and I always was like, I'm going to do that route. It looks great and it looks fun, but to complete it was a different matter. Having to make my way through some pretty tough scenarios in the first few days were absolutely brutal and draining and just even getting so close to the end with about 40 miles and my cranks were falling off and my bike was just going, it's had enough, it's time. 
but I had to make it and even then get into the ferry and still then having to wait another day just because the ferry wasn't running was just one of these trips that when I finally got to Cape Wrath, I can just relax. I knew I had made it. I knew I had cycled nearly 800 miles off-road on an amazing, amazing adventure. And I also got to film this adventure for you guys, which was what I really wanted to do as well. And it was just such a relief when I finally made it and just could say, yes, I have completed the Great North Trail. All the views, all the amazing fun riding, the people I met along the way, the people I rode with along the way were super cool. And we climbed some massive mountains together. We descended some fun stuff today. My day before the last day, me and this guy, we rode like over a hundred miles that day. It was a long day, but we made it. And just to finish that ride, to say I have cycled the Great North Trail, I'm super proud of that and it was such a fun experience. I definitely, definitely recommend guys, if you want to go on an epic bike packing adventure, do the Great North Trail. So guys, that was a look at my 2021 bike packing adventures and just the general adventures really because it was such an awesome year for adventures now i want to say a huge huge thank you to all you guys who watch these videos it helps me keep making them and it's obviously kind of now what i'm doing or trying to do like full time so i hope you will enjoy the next year of adventures too and, and i hope you all have a great new year and Christmas or whatever you're doing. So guys, keep smiling, enjoy the adventures. I'll see you in the next one.